one of the worst experiences that a person can have is that of grief and sorrow because of a death of a loved one. And the truly sad thing is, is this, that those horrible feelings of loss, being alone, grief, will not come to an end until you yourself die. So as long as you are alive and separated from that loved one, those feelings are not going to change. But here's the good news. If that person who you've lost is a believer, and you too are a believer, that means if both of you have accepted the work of redemption of the Messiah, the Christ, I'm speaking of Jesus of Nazareth, if you have received him into your life, acknowledging your sinfulness and trusting in his death as the payment in full for all of your sins, there will be a great reunion. Now let's learn a little bit about what the Bible says concerning one who is a believer that has died in faith. And you know what the scripture says? First and foremost, that person has consciousness. See, many people wrongly understand what is written in the Bible about the dead. We speak about those who are asleep. But the teaching is this. When one goes to sleep, he expects to get up. And therefore, it became a tradition within the Jewish culture and the Word of God itself to speak about those who are dead as sleeping. Why? Because of that sure expectation for those who are in a covenant relationship with God of the resurrection. But the resurrection for a believer is not just something in the distant future. But there is a resurrection the moment one dies. The scripture, to be absent from this body. The outcome of that is to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, how do we know that? Well, Messiah once said to a criminal, one who was a murderer and a thief, He was on that cross next to Yeshua, and one of those criminals repented. He turned and he believed in Yeshua. That is the Hebrew name for Jesus. He believed in Messiah, the Christ. And Yeshua said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, that is to show that with death comes intimacy. You come into the presence with Messiah. Messiah says, I go and prepare a place for you. Where I am, you shall be always. Now, those who teach about when someone dies that they're asleep, there's no evidence of this. For example, in the book of Luke in chapter 16, Now, there are those who say, well, this is just a parable. Well, there's no scriptural indicators that it's a parable. But even if it is, parables deal with reality, deals with truth. Messiah wouldn't say something that was false, incorrect. In order to illustrate something, he illustrated things with the truth. And he used real people, people that had names like Abraham. And in this account, there is a a wealthy man who was faithless and a very poor man who had faith. And they both died, but their experience was very different. That wealthy man who did not have faith in the covenantal promises of God that God originally made to Abraham, this wealthy man He died and he was in torment. But realize something. 
he was conscious. He wasn't asleep. And he looked over across this great, great valley, and he saw who he recognized. He recognized this poor man who used to beg at his door. And he also recognized Abraham. No one was asleep. Now, this was before the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, when a believer dies, and we're emphasizing in this study, believers. When a believer dies, immediately with death, they are brought into the presence with God with the Son of God, with Messiah in heaven. They are not asleep. They have consciousness. Now, the second thing I want to say is based upon the fact that this rich man, he recognized Lazarus, that poor beggar. He recognized Avram. He knew him. So learn a biblical truth. When we die and we go to heaven, we will recognize people. We will recognize, we will know many more things than we knew previously in this world. We will know one another. We truly will be a family. Now, my wife, for example, her grandmother, she lost her husband and was by herself for 44 years. It's a long time to be alone, a long time to to grieve and have sorrow, this separation. But I want to speak for a moment about not her, but her husband. You see, when one is in the presence of God, in the kingdom of heaven, time's going to be Very, very different. Time is going to be as though it does not exist. And therefore, what may seem like a long time in in light of my wife's grandmother, 44 years, many, many years. But to her husband, these 44 years are going to go by quickly. So when a believer dies, we don't need to be worried or concerned for them. They are not in a state of spiritual coma or or unconsciousness or asleep. They are alive. In fact, in fact, they've never been more alive. Did not the scripture say, That God is not a God of the dead, but a God of the living. Not those that are sleeping, but those who are alive. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, they are alive. Some people will turn to 1 Samuel chapter 28. And we know the account. When, When Samuel the prophet, he died. And Saul, wicked King Saul. He received a lot of comfort and counsel from Samuel, and he felt that Samuel could could solve his problems by Samuel's close relationship with God. And therefore, Saul went to a witch, the witch of Endor, and he uh, summoned up the spirit of Samuel. Now, there's a lot that we can say about this, but the point I want to make is a response to what others say. When when Samuel spoke, he says, some translations say, why did you disturb me? And they say, he was sound asleep. Not the word for disturbing. If you check it out, it is a word for anger. Why have you angered me? You see, Samuel wasn't asleep. He, too, was in the presence of, of paradise with God enjoying the promises of God. So when a believer dies, they have consciousness. They are with God. There is not that same sense of time. There's not that feeling of of separation that others who are left behind, who are grieving that one's death, 
they don't have that same grief and sorrow because they are with God, worshiping God, being a recipient of the promises of God. So there's consciousness. There is a reunion with, with other believers and other believers who are family members. Now, we're not going to be in the same type of relationships, but we'll know those people. We'll recognize them. And God is going to make us one family. Time will, will be different. And there will be a good, a good, great experience for those who have departed from us. So be assured, do not be concerned for them. If they've died in faith as a believer, having accepted the gospel sometime previously before they died, they are in the kingdom of heaven with God. And they have no regrets. They have joy. They are united with others that have gone before them in the faith to death and they are experiencing the presence of God the worship of God and for them it's only going to be like a brief moment whether it's 20 years 40 years 50 years whatever however much time passes of this separation for them it's only going to be like a brief moment until once more there is that great reunion that that coming together with those that they left behind in this world. So you can be full of grief and sorrow for that pain, for that separation. It is difficult. But do not be concerned or sad or full of sorrow for those who have went on into the kingdom of heaven. Because they are experiencing the promises of God. They know the joy of God. And they are responding with thanksgiving unto him. And in a brief moment from their perspective, you and them will be reunited. Our God is a good God. Our God is a faithful God. Our God is not a God of the dead, but he has come in order that we might have life, life abundantly here and a glorious kingdom experience full of the promises and the goodness and the blessings of God for eternity in that kingdom. I'll close with this. Our eternal destiny biblically is called the new Jerusalem. See, there's a day when heaven is going to be no more. And this earth, this creation, will be no more. The Bible says there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. That is a new creation, a new reality. And you know what that new reality is called? It's the kingdom of God in its final, its eternal state. And it's called the new Jerusalem. And you know why? It's spoken of in that term. The word new speaks of that which is different. And that reality is going to be very, very, very different than the reality of this world. There, there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more sickness. What is it going to be? Well, I'll close by teaching you a Hebrew word. You've all heard of the term Jerusalem. In Hebrew, Yerushalayim. And it comes from two Hebrew words, which means to take possession of. And the second word, you know this word, shalom. But you may not know the word shalom really means the fulfillment of the world, will of God. In that new Jerusalem, we're going to take hold of the fulfillment of of the will of God, his promises and his blessings. So my, my counsel to you is this. If you haven't already accepted the Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, into your life,
you would say, yes, at this very moment, I'm a sinner. And I ask forgiveness and I trust in what God has provided. When he sent his only begotten son into this world to die in order that my sin debt might be paid in full by his blood, by his death. I believed he died on that cross, but I also believe he rose again, signifying this eternal life. If you pray that prayer and say, yes, I'm a sinner and I trust in him and I invite him into my life, if you pray that, you will be assured of that eternity in the kingdom of God, whereby you will experience that reunion with other believers, especially those believers that you love so much in this world. Our God is a great God. Accept his truth, receive his promises, and you'll never have any regret for making those decisions. Shalom from Israel.